Good afternoon, and welcome to A Beer with the Old Growler. I'm Pete LaFrance, the Old Growler, and I'm glad to be with you this Thursday afternoon. It is the 18th of June, 2020, and it's the 93rd day of us being under pause here in New York, or sheltered in place, as most places are calling it. And this is the 64th Old Growler. Yes, sir, that's what it is. 64 weekdays in a row. We have been broadcasting, and I hope you have all been watching. And those of you who have not been watching, welcome. The Old Growler welcomes you because, boy, he's thirsty today. All right. What's the reason for the Old Growler? Well, take a look at the front page of this uh, channel, and you'll be able to find out. It's right there. And... Uh, I explain the fact that, well, the fact that we're under pause, sheltering in place, means that there are no pubs, bars, or taverns open up in uh, New York. And so, well, I don't have any place to work. Well, work? What did you say work? I work in bars and taverns? Yes, I do. I do my interviewing there. And why would I interview people there? I'll tell you why. Because I've spent a little while writing books, that's why. And covering the beer industry as well as the hospitality industry. So, when they close down my bars, I have no place to go. In fact, no place to even relax. So, I'm gonna invite all of you folks to come relax with me. How about that? Good idea? Well, I think so. In fact, it's a great idea as far as I'm concerned. And I'm a little thirsty right now. I don't know about you guys, but it's five o'clock and that means it's time for a beer. What do we got today? I'm going to return to a, an old favorite. Usually I go across the street and, uh, well, across the park there to uh, the uh, Henry Street Ale House and pick up a growler, a real growler. But not today. <laughs> I was a little bit busy today, so I'm going to have to make do with what I've got. And what I've got is a DFM2 Experimental Hop Series IPA from the Torch and Crown Brewery in Manhattan. And uh, since you've already, well, you might not know what this is. It's a, there we go. I'll let you know. All right. Well, we've reviewed this before, and I will put a link down in the information box so that you will know what I thought of the tasting itself. But right now, I'm going to refresh my taste buds. I seem to remember it being a very good beer. All right. Here we go now. The computer has had a chance to taste some beer over the last three weeks, and we don't want that to happen again. So, and Peter... Yesterday, you did a really nice old growler about how to pour beer into a glass, and did you do that right? No, you didn't. Not now. Look at the head on that, boy. Uh, it's a waste of time. Here I am, supposed to be a professional bar fly, and I can't even pour a beer. It's been one of those days. <laughs> Every once in a while, we get them, don't we? All right. Well, it's a long trip, but... What the H? It's five o'clock on a Thursday. Here's to you. If you've been here before, you know how things work. We start out with a little uh, beer to wet the old whistle. And then we go to meeting expectations, the beer tasting. Today's uh, beer is going to be another beer from the Randolph Brewing Company here in Brooklyn. And uh, we have uh, been tasting, uh, this will be number four of their beers. And uh, I've certainly uh, enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed tasting that is for sure. It's just a, it's a brewer's, a small brew pub that's uh, only about a block and a half away. They have three uh, places, uh, stores, as we call them in uh, the industry. A uh, restaurant is a store. <laughs> Figure that one out. All right, well, I've got three stores, one in Dumbo, uh, one in uh, um, Soho, and one in Long Island City, I do believe. Look it up. It's a good brewery. All right. Meeting expectations. Usually, we had that over when we were at the Henry Street Ale House on Thursdays, and we would post them the next week. And what we would do is get together, the bartender and the bar manager, well, he's the same guy, Jerry Scott, and myself and Jim Bennis, and usually one or two, at least one or two other people who are there at the bar, and they get to get in on the tasting too. How do we work it? Simple. 
we take a look at the label, just like we would look at this label here. It looks fairly industrial type, uh, kind of funky. Uh, then we read off the label. We see exactly what the information is on it. And uh, once we do all of that, we make sure that we don't miss a thing, such as alcohol by volume, or if they have international bittering units on it, any information that we can get, we take a look. And we read it. Then Jerry cracks it open. We pour the samples and we taste. And we find out if it meets expectations, gets a thumbs up. If it doesn't meet expectations, it gets a thumbs down. Okay, so that's how the tastings work. Well, today, as I said, from Randolph Brewing Company, and you can, there's no mistake about that, that's Randolph Brewing Company, we have a pale ale. Now, we'll talk about that later. We will get to it, believe you me. I actually have some sort of a script here that I try and follow. All right, we've got that all set up. Well, it's been a pretty nice day here in, uh, in Brooklyn, uh, New York. It's been pretty quiet. It's a beautiful day outside. I wish I'd had a chance to get out there, but I have a lot of work to do. Oh. And of course, there is the shelter in place that is going on. And being a person of a certain age, uh, crowds are not such a good idea for me right now. Hmm? Okay. Well, I'm going to have to say I'll give another compliment to the uh, Torch and Crown people. They've done a wonderful job with this. Let me just tell you what I'm drinking here so that you can get an idea of it. Apparently, this is brewed with new, untested, experimental hop varieties. Now, I certainly wish they had told me what type of hops they were so that I could research it. I'm going to have to get in touch with the brewers. I think that's the best thing to do, isn't it? If you need to know something, go find out. Okay. I will find out, actually. And let's see. We call uh, it a DFM. Some uh, are reckless, and so they have a nice little write-up on there. But it's a, it's a nice beer. In fact, it's uh, what I would call a, an empty can beer. That means I empty the can. Sometimes you don't empty the can. And uh, then, well... It doesn't meet expectations, does it? All right. Well, that, that's not quite a two-finger head, but if it had <clears throat> been poured properly, it would be. I apologize for clearing my throat. I don't want to blow out anybody's ears. All right. Well, it's about enough of getting a wet whistle and uh, getting my palate ready to go. It's time to taste the beer. All right. What do we have today? The beer of the day is... A Randolph, it's called a side hustle. Uh, and they, unfortunately, uh, the fellow who uh, made the, uh, poured the crowler for me, simply put down pale ale. Now, uh, I happen to know for sure that their pale ale, simple pale ale, they haven't been making it. So uh, technically, this is not a pale ale. So I would have to go look at their beer chart and find out what it was. And I came up with, uh, as the receipt says, a Randolph side hustle. So it's a side hustle pale ale. On the can, of course, since it's a crowler and it is poured in, in, in uh, canned right at the brewery, uh, it's a handheld, it's a hand operation. You have the empty can, you go to the tap, you fill it up, you put, slide a top onto it, you have a, a compressor that uh, seals it, and that's how a crowler works. So you don't get to put too much information on it because all of the crowlers are all the same for all the beers. Isn't that interesting? All right. Well, so we don't have much to read off of here, so I went and did a cheat sheet. And the cheat sheet tells me that the Randolph Side Hustle is an IPA, or as they call it, a Session India Session, uh, uh, India Session Ale. Believe me, later on we're going to talk about styles of beers. I'll explain it to you then. All right. The interesting thing on this one, though, is that it says it's 4.7% alcohol by volume. Now, that's a session beer. However, it says no IBUs, no international bittering units. That's impossible. A beer has to have international bittering units. So where that information came from, I have no idea, and we'll be finding out. Now, it says brewed with English two-row and a hint of wheat to round out its body. The beer brings lemon zest and stone fruit to the nose and a bitter bite and clean finish 
that leaves you wanting another pint. Well, if it has a bitter bite, how can it have no international bittering units? We're going to find out, aren't we? Okay, and uh, let's see. The rest of it is a nose. It says the, the fruit, it has stone fruit to the nose. Well, nose is a term used to describe aroma. Instead of saying it has a stone fruit aroma, well, a nose. Technical term, jargon, and everybody loves to use it in brewing, believe you me. All right, we're going to crack this open. What am I expecting? I have no idea what to expect, except it's a pale ale. It should be about that color, but not hazy. Please, no, make it hazy. I don't know. No, please. Okay. Uh, English two-row and a hint of wheat. Uh, the, the wheat doesn't change the, the, the color. It changes the flavor a little bit. And as far as the lemon zest and the stone fruit, that has to do with the, uh, the, the, the uh, hops that are used. And again, it doesn't tell me what type of hops. It doesn't tell me what type of bittering units it is. So let's crack this open. What am I expecting? I'm expecting a brown beer with apparently a lot of hops to it. All right. Back up the truck. Why do I use a wine glass? Because I use a wine glass for all of the beers. Why do I use a wine glass for all of the beers? That way, this type of a glass you would use for an ale because it has a wide open mouth and the ale aromas can come out. And I'll explain why an ale is different than a lager. But anyways, we have a nice, clear beer here. Okay. One point going for it. It looks like a pale ale. It does have some hop aroma to it. Now, when I say hops, it means a, fl a flowery type. If you go into a florist st shop, that is the type of, when you can go into a florist shop, that's the type of uh, aroma that this is giving off right now. The type of nose. The first swig. There is a spike of flavor, which is the hop part of it. However, it's not kicking me in the teeth, so it's not, uh, it's not aggressive. And by aggressive, I mean heavy hop. However, there is definitely a citric undertone to it, uh, which is um, with, a, uh, with a pale ale is a little offsetting. However, every ale is unique. And so I'm not going to take points off. I'm going to have another swig. There. The malt is starting to come through a little bit more. It leaves a slightly metallic tang on the tongue. Clears the palate, that's for sure. Uh, by clearing the palate, that means it refreshes the mouth. So it does. It does say what it it does what it says. A clean finish that leaves you wanting another pint. Now, whether I want another pint or not, uh, I leave that up to uh, the next few uh, samples. But essentially, does the beer of the day Randolph side hustle meet expectations? Yes, it does. It certainly does meet expectations. <laughs> I'm the old growler, hoping all of your beers meet expectations. All right. Always good to try a new beer. They have, from the last, the last I looked, they have a good dozen of beers that they, they brew. I know that they, the brewing, uh, the brew house is here in Brooklyn, and how they managed to turn out a dozen beers, I have no idea. But uh, they have a list here. It's pretty much the list. I will put as much of it as I can down in the information box below. And you can uh, take a look. And if you're in Brooklyn, when you get to Brooklyn, when they open the place up again, I, it's a place worth visiting. That's, that's what I say. Okay. Well, thanks very much for watching the uh, tasting part of the old growler. Uh, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe for sure and a thumbs up. And if you touch on that alert bell down there, you won't miss a single one of the old growlers. That's for sure. All right. Well.
The feature story today, or the essay as I have it, is now drenched in beer. No, it's not. Okay. What I want to talk about is styles of beer. Now, that might be a simple thing to say. There's a styles of beer. There's beer is beer is beer. No, beer is not beer is beer. There are essentially two, two types of beer. One is an ale. The other is a lager. Now, the big reasons, the differences between these two is the fact that they are fermented by different yeasts. Same, same phylum, same thing. It's a yeast. However, the ale yeast, which is the older yeast, actually, it ferments on the top of the beer. It forms a big, thick layer of foam. And it, what it does, yeast, what yeast does is it metabolizes the sugars in the beer. Now, it's not beer yet, of course, because it is just starting out. So what do we call it first? We call it wort, W-O-R-T. Wort means, quite simply, the liquid that is left over after you take malted barley or malted grains and you steep them in water, usually around 90 degrees, for about an hour to get all the sugars out. Then you get all the sugar out, and that's called wort. Then you take the wort and you put it in a kettle. And you add hops to it, and that turns into beer. That is what happens. Then you take it, you put it into uh, a fermenter. Now, here's the difference. An ale fermenter traditionally was open, wide, big, round container. And you would put the wort in, and you would add the yeast. Or in the terms that we would call the brewing terms, you would pitch the yeast. Now, whether it's, a slide, whether it's a slider or a fastball, I can't tell you. But you pitch the yeast into the wort. Hmm. Okay. Then it ferments. Now, if it is an ale yeast, it stays right on top. And it starts ferment. It starts eat, the yeast starts eating away that sugar. And it starts turning it into CO2. That's the first thing. And alcohol. The most important thing. Well, maybe the most important thing. Well, yes, it is, because it gives you a buzz. And anybody that says you drink beer uh, for flavor, yes, you do. But you also drink it to get a buzz. Don't lie. Okay. Also, it ferments at a high temperature, around 65, 75 degrees. Sometimes it can get up to 80 degrees. I mean, that's hot. And it ferments fast. In about a week, maybe less. That yeast will eat all of the sugar in there. It'll turn all of the sugar into it to, to either CO2 and alcohol. Then the next thing you do is you take that beer, which is now beer, and you put it into a uh, secondary fermenter. Now, this one is sealed tight. And that way, the yeast keeps going. You add a little bit more uh, work to it just to get that yeast going. And it creates pressure. The CO2 is pressure. And then... Tap it, and you've got yourself carbonated beer. That's how it works. Now, the same thing works for a lager as well. But we're going to stay. <clears throat> we're going to stay with the ales right now. Now, according to uh, Wikipedia, <laughs> there are eleven different ales. There is brown ale, pale ale, India pale ale, golden ale, Scotch ale, barley wine, mild ale, Burton ale, old ale, Belgian ale. And cask ale. Now, I take exception to cask ale because cask, any one of those ales can be casked. On the other hand, the Brewers Association here in the United States claims that there are 21 styles of ales that come from Great Britain. There are 23 styles of ale that come from North America. There are 18 styles of ale that come from Belgium and France. 13 provided by the Germans and three the Irish provide. So altogether, that is 44, uh, <clears throat> 50, 60, 70. So there is at least 70 styles of ale, according to the Brewers Association here in the United States. That makes it a little complicated, but hey, what am I to say? Take a look. I'll leave a, a link at the, in the uh, information box below uh, to the Brewers Association so that you can read all about those 87 different styles. Now, now we come to <clears throat> lager. Now, lager is a little bit different. Lager, 
the, the yeast that is used for ales is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a Latin term, and it has been around a long time. There are all kinds of ale yeast, variations of ale yeast, believe me. I've tried brewing with some of them, and <clears throat> they're easy to brew with because you don't have to have them ice cold, which is where I'm getting to lager. Okay, lager. According to Wikipedia, lager is a, a beer conditioned at low temperatures. Yes, it is. Lagers can be pale amber or dark. Pale lager is the most widely consumed commercially available lager in the world. Beer in the world. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Saccharomyces pastoris, as in Louis Pasteur, that's the one. These ales uh, originated, these lager yeasts originated in Bavaria, essentially. The monks in Bavaria uh, would lager, and lager is a German word for storage or cellar. And what they would do is they would lager their beers, and they would ferment them at very low temperatures, usually around 34, 35. That was pretty much as warm as you wanted. That's Fahrenheit. Uh, that's pretty much as, as, as high as you want, as much as you wanted to get. And they would lager them, store them in cellars uh, deep down underneath. Because it, once you get below the ground, once you get a cellar down there, cellar temperature. Cellar temperature is 51 degrees Fahrenheit, and which is a great temperature for beer. It's a great temperature for people. It's a great temperature for cheese. It, I, I happen to think that 50 degrees Fahrenheit is an ideal temperature, but that's just my way of looking at it. Anyway, when it comes to lager beers, according to Wikipedia, the great one, there are three types of lager beers, pale ale or pale lager, Vienna lager, and dark lager. whoop to do According to the North America, to the uh, uh, Brewers Association, here we go again. We've got 12 North American uh, origin lager styles, 19 European lager styles. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so the European Americans, uh, we've got American style lager, contemporary American style lager, American style light lager, contemporary American style light lager, American style pilsner, contemporary American. <clears throat> I will put the entire list down underneath in the information box. Now, why uh, are there so many? There seems to be a difference between the amounts of, of styles of beers uh, according to the Brewers Association and according to uh, Wikipedia. Well, why is that? Well, the Brewers Association every year holds what is called the Great American Beer Festival in Denver, Colorado. Although I don't think they're going to be doing that this year, but never mind. And hey, 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 greetings from uh, greetings from Brooklyn. We have folks from Atlanta with us. Hail, hail! Yes, glad to have you with me. <clears throat> Good to see you, Thomas. Uh, cheers. Well, as I was saying, the Great American Beer Festival is held in Denver, Colorado. Boulder, Denver, Denver, Colorado. Uh, when, uh, every year. Well, it has been in, in the event for at least the last 35 or 40 years. And in the beginning, they would hand out medals for the best, uh, best beers. They would gold, silver, or yeah, gold, silver, and bronze. And they were about, I remember when I first went, which was, I believe, 1990. And at that time, there were maybe 75, maybe 100 styles of beer. And that's ales and lagers. And the 75 ales or lagers were all judged and given medals or not given medals. This year, or last year, I think there were over 300 of types of styles of beer. Now, how could there be that many more styles of beer in just 20, 30 years? Well, because to compete in the Great American Beer Festival, you, the brewer pays a fee so that their beers can be uh, tasted and uh, rated. So the more styles there are, the more beers are tested and rated. You do the math. I happen to agree that, or to think, that the best idea, similar 
uh, to, to separating out beers. I mean, you can nitpick every single freaking style you want. However, the best uh, way I think of doing it is the way they do it in Montreal. Uh, the brew pubs up there, as I remember, and it's been a while since I've been up there. Yes, I know, about 15 years. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the styles there are blonde, rouge, and noir. Blonde, I don't have to translate that. Rouge, red, noir, black. Blonde, red, and black. Simple as that. And when it comes down to it, it makes sense to try and, and delineate all the different styles. Well, Peter, what's the matter with it? Look at the wines. Are you going to just say red wine and white wine? There's also sparkling wine and rosé. Oh, yeah, 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 there is. But when it comes to simply talking about beer, there are two. There's ales and lagers, and they are blonde red or black. That's all there is to it. It's as simple as that to start with. Later on, if you want to find out all the different styles of beer, hey, I'm all for it. For all the research that goes in to finding out where certain yeasts came from and why a beer from Kolsch, Germany takes different, tastes different than a beer from Hamburg, Germany. Or why a beer from Alsace-Lorraine tastes different than a beer from the Camargue. Both of those are in France. Uh, why would a beer in New York that's brewed with the same recipe taste different than a beer brewed in California? Well, I'll give you one example. Cascade hops. Cascade hops in California, in Oregon, are, are grown in Oregon and in the Northwest. They are a traditional hop used in uh, particularly ales and in particularly West Coast ales. Ah, thank you. Tom, uh, Thomas uh, has uh, also suggested as far as, as uh, rating beers or, or naming beers that they be table, medium, and strong. That makes perfect sense. It really does. And thanks for, for adding that, table, medium, and strong. That means table beer would be around anything from 3.5% to probably around um, 6, maybe. A medium would be 7, 8, uh, well, 6, 7, and 8% alcohol by volume. And then once you get over 9 or 10 by volume, then you're talking about strong beer. And it can be either ale or lager. Both of those can run the gamut as far as alcohol content. So yeah, that's a great way of labeling it. But to discover all the different styles of beer means simply as they are in wine. You go to the different regions of the world and each region has its own way of doing things. Each region has its own uh, atmosphere, its own, the French call it terroir. Uh, the ground, uh, the, the earth that gives the flavor to everything, uh, to the fruits and vegetables that are grown in a particular area. Uh, in fact, the, you can grow the same thing. I was talking about cascade hops in the, in the West. You grow cascade hops in the West, it tastes like grapefruit in a beer. If you grow cascade hops in the East, particularly upstate New York, which it is being grown, the flavor is more like, and it's weird, to say this, but it's more like a balsamic vinegar flavor. And it's the same hop, but it's, it's grown into different areas. So you're going to get different flavors. So no matter where you are, wherever your brewery is, uh, particularly if you're like um, Area 2 up in uh, Connecticut, uh, which is part of the Two Roads Brewing co Company, they brew their beer with wild yeast. The yeast there, the wild, from the atmospheric yeast, sim similar to the way the Belgians do. And to do that in Connecticut, you're going to get different types of microbes and yeast making your beer than you would if you brewed it in New York City, or if you brewed it in Charlotte, North Carolina, or if you brewed it in Atlanta, Georgia. Every area 
has its own feel, its own taste, its own flavor. And I mean that as far as beer. I mean that as far as food. I mean that as far as people. And it's the variety that is the fantastic thing. We're not all the same. No, 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 no. And thank goodness we're not all the same. Thank goodness that all beer isn't the same. It came close in the 60s and 70s in the United States. But then along came the microbrewers. And then along came the small breweries. And then came the brew pubs. And then, oh, well, just about the same time, it was, if I remember right, Las Pinas, out in California, Alice Waters was farm to, uh, uh, farm to fork. Uh, that began a, a real look at growing uh, heritage tomatoes and heritage fruits and, and looking and trying to get local, 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 local. And it, it worked. It really did. It worked for a while. And then uh, we started to lean more towards the, the multinational and it got uh, less expensive to purchase uh, fruit from Peru than it did to grow it in the United States. Well, that's, you got what you paid for. And now that this pandemic has taken place, uh, now local is very important, very, very important because you've closed off all the access, much of the access to other parts of the food line particularly in the beer world. So drinking local, eating local, and staying local. I think we're going to be rediscovering that. I happen to, to feel that that is an important golden parachute out of this pandemic. Another golden parachute out of this pandemic has been the old growler. I came along because of this shutdown of all the pubs, bars, and taverns. Well, according to Governor Cuomo, uh, next Monday, the 22nd, it's going to be opened up a little bit more. Restaurants will be allowed to have outdoor dining. Uh, breweries will uh, have uh, areas outside of, the, of their little brewery that they, if it's, as long as it's outside, uh, people can congregate, and as long as they're wearing masks. And we're slowly getting back uh, to uh, a social uh, situation. And being that being the case, uh, this today, Thursday, the 18th of June, is the next to last day of the live old growler. Now, uh, for every week, every weekday, I'd like to, to keep on Mondays and Fridays. Mondays, the start of the week, to let you know what's coming up, because I do get a lot of information from the different breweries. And so, why don't I let you guys know what's coming up, especially if it's in your part of the United States. I'm going to open up my um, uh, speak, uh, talk and, and, and research so that it's not just the New York area. So it won't be just New York beers. Uh, we'll start to get back into trying beers from other parts of the United States. Also, information about places opening up, breweries opening up, uh, where they'll be, what they'll be serving. All of this on Monday to let you know what the week is, is, is going to happen. And at the end of the week on Fridays, uh, I would like to go live as well. And that way we can sum up what happened during the week. During the week, I will be posting Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We'll be tasting notes probably, and most, most, most of them will be tasting notes. However, every once in a while, I'll go back over the old growlers. We've got 60, we'll have 65 of them to go back over and I'll splice out some little bits and pieces, especially when it comes to my life as a professional bar fly, which is uh, going to be a book. So you'll be able to get the tastings and a little bit of an insight of what it is like to professionally follow the beer and hospitality industries. Now I'd like to thank every, um, Oh, uh, I pause here for a moment to, to read what uh, I've been uh, talked here. And uh, why not do a live old growler from the Henry Street Ale House? That is a heck of a good idea. That is a heck of a good idea. Uh, once I can get the technology down, I'm pretty sure I can take this here laptop over there. And we, we can probably go. That's thank you very much, Tom. You know something that that is. <laughs> that's a little dangerous being in a, in a, in a, in a bar during bar hours, but uh, that's, thank you very much. 
And for those of you who are watching after uh, uh, the eighth Thursday, the 18th of June, please, in the uh, um, comments box, let me know what you'd like to see. That is a, because that is exactly what I want to be able to do is to follow the beer wherever it will lead me. <laughs> I will follow it wherever it may go. Oh, Peter, don't sing. You really don't want to. But great idea, Tom. Thank you very much. Oh, that's not a bad beer. The uh, pale ale, the uh, side hustle. But as I say, it's got that, it's got a little bit of a, of a citric uh, note that seems to be kind of lost. It, uh, right there. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It makes good beer. It meets expectations. I'm going to slide back to the, uh, to the DFM2 and try and find uh, out what the hops are in here. Oh, wow, that tastes different. <laughs> Why does it taste different, Peter? Because you just had a pale ale with a, another type. Well, that shows the incon incongruity of beer tastings. And if you, uh, uh, oh boy, if you have any, any other flavor in your mouth before you go to a beer tasting, uh, it's going to accentuate one of the other. It's either the sweetness or the, uh, or the bitterness or the sourness. And so uh, it's important to always uh, rinse your mouth with uh, either. Uh, I like to use a carbonated water rather than a regular water because carbonated water uh, has a little bit of, well, it's carbonated carbolic acid. And so the acid can, it is an acid, will clean um, the taste buds. It'll, it'll clear them out and uh, give them a nice baseline to work with. So that's another thing that the old growler has learned over the years is always uh, rinse uh, and uh, spit, but not your beer. <laughs> okay. Well, we've run a little past our time. I do thank everybody for showing up here, uh, especially those who have come here while I've arrived while I've been live. Uh, <clears throat> don't forget to uh, make a comment. I would certainly appreciate that. And for those of you who are watching at another time and date, thank you very much for stopping in. I would like you to leave comments as well. And I'm hoping that all of your beers meet expectations, number one, and that, uh, well, life gets a little bit better. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this thing up right now. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I appreciate all of your comments. Cheers. <laughs>